Hey guys, welcome in. This is episode three of our Mogadishu Somalia street scene. And just a quick recap here. In the first two episodes, we planned out our buildings, we built our buildings, we detailed our buildings, and we slathered some paste all over our buildings. Now in this episode, we've got a lot to do because we're going to start working on the exterior of the buildings. We're going to do some pretty unique artwork and signage. And I'm really looking forward to this. It's certainly out of my comfort zone. Got a lot of work to do. Let's get started. But before I can get to all that fun stuff, I need to do some prep. The building was first given a layer of Mr. Surfer 1200 just sprayed from a rattle can. And then I'm just dabbing on some white, kind of a cream white color overall. And that's the base color for the buildings themselves. The tin roof that we worked on in the last episode, a light rust undertone. And I'm just picking out each of the individual panels with the airbrush just to give a little bit of definition. I've got a layer of hairspray and then an overspray of kind of this oxidized aluminum type color, a light gray. And then certain of these panels, I'm just picking out, just making them a little bit different and darker colors, give them a little bit of personality with a darker color gray. Since I'm in a hairspray chipping mood, I'm going to work on the roll-up door at the same time. I have the base color of a rust, and then over the top, just some squiggly, random, cloudy type pattern of a steel color, and that's just with a blue-gray. And then next, just a very light covering of hairspray, and that's a straight from the rattle can. Nothing fancy here. But what is fancy is, yeah, we're going to do some color. And you'll see why this yellow color is coming into play here in just a few minutes. We're going to look at some references but this is going to be a lot of fun. We don't often get a chance to work with bright colors in our, especially our military armor scenes. Then just activate the chipping fluid or the hairspray in this case with a little bit of water. And I don't want this to be a destroyed door. It's just going to show quite a bit of wear and tear, especially on those high points. When doing research for this scene, I quickly found out that a lot of the buildings, <laughs> a majority of the buildings within the city, have these very vibrant and bright and colorful graphics on the exterior of the buildings. Matter of fact, Mogadishu is known for this type of artwork on their storefronts. I then came to understand that a large portion of the Somali population is illiterate. And so over time, the storekeepers, restaurant owners and such came to paint pictures of their services or the products sold within in order to communicate to the population who could not read. Which brings us to this storefront, this dental building. This is so great. Um, and now you understand the yellow color. And this is going to be the focus or the inspiration of one of the buildings on this street scene. Well, let's get on to it. So I've given a little bit of an outline of the word dental across the roll-up door. And then I'm just filling in some of the lines, making the word dental. And I'm using the AK weathering pencils for this sign. And this is the smoke color, so it's a, it's a darker gray, I guess you would call it, color. And one of the nice things about using the pencils, one, you could be precise. You literally just write what you want to write. But secondly, I'm able to come back in with a brush moistened with water, and I can clean up some of the details. So any place that I want to change the lines or clean up interior spaces or such, it's just an easy, easy cleanup. And once again, referring back to my references, I noticed that almost all the signs have this two-toned, two-color sort of a pattern to them where they have, you know, the word and then it's outlined in a different color, kind of a shadow in a different color. And I want to make sure that I capture that on these, these storefronts as well. So I've, again, using the AK weathering pencils red, I've outlined the black at this stage. I'm just coming back in and once again with the clean brush with a little bit of water and just tidying up those lines and making everything nice and crisp. And then for the door itself, I want to show a little bit of character and wear and history on it. So maybe, you know, they did a little patch job here, or repainted some graffiti or changed their store hours. I don't know. I'm making up stories here. But just a little bit of, of fresh paint here and there just to kind of give it a little bit of, like I said, a little bit of background and history and a story. And then perhaps one of the more, I don't know, <laughs> funny parts of this is I wanted to make sure that I have one of those fantastic images of a mouth or teeth or whatever it is on the front of that dental office reference. So I've got this image that I'm kind of copying from one of those pictures. And this is this this mouth, this, this top lip and these teeth just coming out. And it just absolutely shows that this guy is a dental office and we need to take him seriously. 
And once again, weathering pencil is used here. So of the black, the smoke color, I've used red. And then I'm coming back in and doing a few highlights on the teeth and also highlight on the lips and the gums there a little bit with the white as well. And then the thing with the weathering pencils is once you draw onto the surface, as I've done here, you can come back in with a brush that's just dampened with a little bit of water and you can do a lot of blending, not only the cleanup like, like I was doing around the lettering, but you could do some blending and such as well. Super powerful. And I like the look of these too, because they look diffuse as if they're painted and aged just straight off the pencil itself. Moving on to the next reference. This one is, this is my favorite. This storefront, this little fast food market, mini mart, whatever you want to call it. I love these graphics on this one here. And so I'm, you'll see in just a second, I'm going to steal a ton of these ideas and apply them to my building. Well, we've got a lot to do on this storefront for sure. Um, starting out with the fast food, because this is a fast food place. I don't know if it's a mini market or a fast food restaurant. I'm not really sure, but <laughs> because we're going to put all sorts of signs on the front of this, but I'm going to begin with the logo or the fast food sign. The red is weathering pencils, the AK weathering pencils, and then the drop shadow or this outline here, I'm using a fine tipped Sharpie. Next, we need to start working on showing off what we're selling in our little fast food place. Well, I thought yeah, it's hot, it's dusty. I think we need something to drink. So this first one is going to be a Pepsi can. Well, part of the logo for the Pepsi can is white. And so you can see where I've added just like a little bit of paint work, a little aqua tone behind. And this just allows the white to pop. And the white, in this case, I'm painting on using um, acrylic paints. But then switching back to the weathering pencils, this will be the coloring of the cans and the logo itself. And what I do when I use these pencils is I lightly moisten or just dampen the surface of the building itself. And then I start drawing. And this, this little bit of moisture just aids in the transfer of the pencil onto the surface. As you can see, a little bit of water and then a little bit of drawing. And this will become part of that Pepsi logo here pretty quickly. And as will be the case in all of these little signs or drawings, I've outlined the can itself with that Sharpie and then just with the brush again moistened with a little bit of water I can just kind of manipulate the colors a little bit and add a little bit of shading and texture to that moving on to other signs now we've got quite a few things to sell here apparently we're selling a coke up there some I don't know what do we got some rolls and this plate of food, and I don't know exactly what this food is, um, little round things, probably a little fruit dish or something like that, but it's on one of that reference photograph and is, I don't know, just, just, just too cute to not, to not do. I hope watching me paint signs is not too tedious, but I do, <laughs> I'm really finding this enjoyable and I hope you are too. And then as I'm working my way through this, again, looking at the references, this, this plate of food is apparently on a bed of lettuce. So I've got a little bit of green that I'm adding in there. Again, this is using acrylic paints. And then once I have all the colors in place, then it's the outlining. And again, this is with the fine point Sharpie. I go around the, the Coca-Cola bottle and I'll be going around this little plate of fruit as well. And again, looking at those references, this is one of those characteristics, this outlining, this heavy outlining that really sets this type of artwork um, apart from other types of artwork. And then once I have those outlines established, I can come back in and do a little bit of enhancing. And so with a little bit of, in this case, is a little bit of white acrylic paint, I could add just a little bit of those highlights on some of the bottles and pieces of fruit and such, and just to, just to make them pop and shine. And once again, if you look at the references, those all have these strong, contrasting highlights of the black outline and these very bright highlights as well. So I wanted to make sure I captured those. Another characteristic of these storefront signs is that they generally have some sort of a shadowing around them. And especially the reference for this particular storefront had these little drop shadows of gray around the plates of food. So I'm adding those as well. And I think they make it pop nicely as well. So it's, it's all good. And then 
Once again, the, the Sharpie just adds some of these heavier lines. This is the lettuce, and again, from the references, little squiggles here and there just to make sure that you know it's a lettuce. Now that I have all my signage done, I can start adding a few of these details that we worked on earlier. So I've got the metal grating that I'm going to place over the front of the window here. I've added the awning over the top of the door, and I'm just painting a little bit of cracked and chipped plaster where it's mounted into the side of the wall. So now that I've got the building pretty much, you know, the painting done, I've got the signs up, got some of the details in place. Now it's time to start integrating with what will be the scene itself. And again, this is going to be a fairly dirty, dusty environment. The road up front is going to be broken up and such. So I need to add some of these dirt and dust elements onto the building facades themselves. A little bit of acrylic paint just drawn across some of these, these edges and corners. Just, just, just enough subtleness and a little bit of outlining just to give it some, again, a little bit of character and contrast. And that pretty much brings us to the end of this episode. And I know that I'm enjoying this project like crazy. It's really fun to be able to do something that's a little bit out of the ordinary. And I hope you're enjoying following along with this as well. If you have liked this episode and haven't already, please hit that like and subscribe button. It does help get this channel out to more and more folks. If you'd like to support this channel further, I do have a Patreon page. The link for that is below. I invite you to come check us out over there. And looking forward to the next episodes, we've got a base to still work on and weather that out and start putting everything together. And I also have some figures. So there's a lot to do on this project still. So we've got another couple episodes in this series for sure. So I hope you're enjoying this. Take care, everyone. Happy modeling, and we'll see you on the next one.